Okay, we talked about operations and tactical planning and strategic planning. Uh, and, and I suppose one of the things I should have mentioned at that point was we should uh, integrate uh, those various levels of plans. Make sure that our operations are consistent with our overall uh, strategic thoughts. But, you know, that is, that is what you have to do all the time. As I say, security management is about more than just a collection of tools. It is making sure that the tools that you have, the um, plans, the uh, uh, the functions, the, the various uh, security functions are all consistent with your overall strategy and the the tactical direction uh, that you're working on. Now, um, that means that you have to consider what are your security requirements. Uh, and there are two different types. Mostly we think about the functional requirements. And that is our, our various security functions, our, our various tools. Um, so, you know, what... Uh, and, and again, you know, eventually we'll get into uh, the risk uh, assessment, the uh, risk um, analysis, uh, and, and into our, our risk management and the decisions there on, and in terms of, you know, what uh, types of security do we need and therefore what uh, tools are we going to be using in that regard and so those are our, our functional requirements what and and that's what most people think but there is another level of security requirements and these are the assurance requirements now the functional requirements are uh in a sense the tools the the tools that we think of the uh the firewalls the uh, anti-malware scanning tools, uh, access control tools, um, uh, you know, all different uh, types of tools uh, that we use in a variety of ways for the, the different types of security uh, that we want to have working. But the assurance requirements are, in a sense, is the tool working? Is the tool doing what we suppose, uh, what we intend it to do? Um, is it working? Is it function? Is it uh, reporting for us um, and to us? Uh, and is what the tool is doing, um, uh, doing what it, what we intended it to do, what or what we thought it was going to do for us? And this is very often uh, the case that we. We think a particular tool is going to give us one thing, and it doesn't actually give us that thing. Uh, one of the examples here is uh, penetration testing. Um, a lot of people think that when they've done a penetration test, they have done their risk analysis. And uh, that is not necessarily the case, because very often a penetration test is done by an outside agency, and it is... Um, uh, they can tell you uh, vulnerabilities and that sort of thing, but they cannot give you a level of risk for one particular reason, and that comes back again to the asset. The outside agency, although they may be, you know, very technically qualified, does not know what the assets mean to you. And that is an inherent part of the risk analysis and the risk management. So... Our assurance requirements uh, are aimed at knowing whether what we are doing in terms of security is appropriate to, again, our business, our particular enterprise, and what it is that we want out of security for this particular enterprise. Um, let me give you a bit more uh, view of the difference between functional 
and assurance requirements. Uh, and one of the uh, examples that I use is uh, when you go to, uh, well, you can go to any restaurant and you go into the washroom and you see these signs saying, Sith Aft must wash their hands before they go back to work. Of course, this is hand hygiene so that uh, the restaurant is not spreading diseases of whatever type, uh, even when you're not dealing with a pandemic. You don't want certain types of germs being transferred uh, by the food. Uh, you know, things like listeria and, and those sorts of things. So, you know, hand hygiene is important. But if you go to, for example, a Subway restaurant, the, um, uh, you know, well, sorry. Uh, to come back, that's the functional requirement, hand hygiene. And, and you know, you could say that hand washing is one of the functional requirements or fulfills one of the functional requirements. But if you go to a, a subway restaurant, um, you don't have uh, an assurance requirement on that. You don't know whether or not these people have washed their hands. You don't know that in, in any restaurant. But... What you do know in a subway is that they put on gloves when they make your sandwich. So they take, you know, gloves out of the box. You can see them wearing the gloves. You can see that they took the gloves fresh out of the box before they made your sandwich. So you have not only the functional requirement in terms of the hand hygiene there, that is... Uh, uh, you know, covered by the fact that they have gloves, but also you have the assurance requirement in that you see them putting on the gloves. You see them wearing the gloves. You, you know, there is the confirmation that the functional requirement is being followed. Um, so, the the functional requirement is the hand hygiene, uh, and you know that is covered by either the hand washing or wearing gloves, but in the case of wearing gloves, we have the additional assurance requirement that you, as the customer, can see, can observe, can, you, you are assured that hand hygiene is being followed. Now, um, in addition there, when, uh, or as, you know, an, an additional example, um, in a different way, is uh, the, issues with regard to um, protection uh, during the pandemic in schools and, and when there were reopening and, and uh, people were concerned, okay, should we have mask mandates? Should we not? Should we have the kids uh, washing their hands? And I mean, you know, some things you can do. Uh, the kids don't really like to to wear the masks, although eventually, you know, that just got to be a thing that everybody went to school with masks on. Um, uh, but uh, hand washing, well, I mean, you know, very quickly, the teachers found out they could turn that into a game. And when you can turn it into a game, you get the kids to do it. But again, you know, that's, that's the functional uh, requirements, security requirements for protection against uh, COVID. Uh, but what kind of assurance requirements did we have? Uh, COVID is, is going to result in studies for decades here uh, because we, you know, there's just an awful lot of things that we don't know and undoubtedly an awful lot of mistakes that we made in terms of the choices that we made. But one of the aspects that's been very interesting in terms of the assurance requirements is we didn't do too badly in the schools because overall we have found that the schools did not have high transmission rates. And therefore, um, we can say, yes, our functional requirements were working. We had the assurance because the, the studies of transmission rates shows that schools were not major vectors of uh, problems and uh, transmission with, with COVID uh, during the pandemic.